Crystal Diff, Program Coordinator with History Services, on location today near Gilcrest Park in Punta Gorda for our new History Spotlight video. I'm here today with Mrs. Marion McAdow, who's going to tell us a little bit about her iconic contributions to the area. Thank you for meeting with me today. I'd like to start off by asking, when did you move to Punta Gorda? I moved here from Chicago with my husband, Perry McAdow, in 1897. Perry had stayed here at the Hotel Punta Gorda the previous year and enjoyed just the beautiful weather and the waterfront and decided to retire here. He retired from a successful mining business and declared this was the place he wanted to spend the rest of his days. So he built a home here for us. Wow, I've heard such great things about your home here too. Can you describe your home and where it was located? Sure, Perry and I had the largest home here in Punta Gorda, right here along Red Esplanade. And it was actually the site of the very first home here in Punta Gorda, where the founders, Isaac and Virginia Tribune lived. The house was completed in 1897 at a cost of $10,000. And as I said, it was the largest one in town, had two and a half stories, and we were even the first in town to have electricity, which was so exciting. We used to host lavish parties here. That sounds very grand. One of your great claims to fame in the area are your horticultural skills. When did you first become interested in plants? My father owned a large nursery in Ohio, so you could say I was raised amongst the plants. I moved to Chicago when I was a young lady and became a teacher at an inner city school. I found that planting window gardens had a very peaceful and civilizing effect on some of my students' behavior. Soon we were planting window gardens in all the classrooms. I feel as though it helped promote my love for spreading the joy of plants wherever I lived. You really took on the saying, bloom where you're planted. What were some of your most memorable plantings in the area? The most memorable would have to be this beautiful tree we're standing in front of. I planted this iconic banyan tree in 1904. It's actually a ficus altamia, or lofty fig. I also planted a beautiful jacaranda and a monkey pod tree on my property, along with the royal palms lining Marion Avenue. When I moved here, I was expecting a lot of trees and plants and there were none. So instead, I set out to create my own tropical paradise. It really is iconic. Around here, all we have to say is the banyan tree and everyone knows exactly what we're talking about without further explanation. Unfortunately, the monkey pod tree was struck by lightning in the 1970s oh. and killed. But it did find new life. It was used to carve the famous Calusta Miku sculpture and lives on as part of the National Trail of the Whispering Giants. As soon as you come into town southbound, you're met by Calusta Miku. What other experiences did you have with plants in the area? I also had a botanical garden on my property and a farm of experimental plants in nearby Cleveland in northeast Punta Gorda along the Peace River. I traveled the world to learn horticulture and collect tropical seeds. I became such an expert that I began working with the Department of Agriculture. They would send me exotic seeds for the farm and I would report back to them on their growth. I also wrote a monthly newsletter column called Florida Growers and served as the vice president of the State Horticultural Society. They called me the ornamental lady. Mm -hmm. We owned one of the first automobiles in Punta Gorda and I used to drive along and toss out flower seeds along the roadside. I even encouraged school kids to do the same and help with my mission. Well, you kept very busy. Did you have any free time to enjoy any hobbies? Yes, I managed to squeeze in some. While I was out around town, I loved to take photographs and developed my own film. I also painted and was interested in music and was fascinated by spiritualism. But most of my time was taken by improving the area, by raising funds for projects and beautifying with plants. You have quite a wide range of skills. Thank you. When Perry passed away in 1918, I had to expand even more. First, I had to orchestrate the first cremation in the area for my dear Perry which was quite a feat. It was a highly irregular request at the time. Then I took over some of his financial affairs, including the directorship for the Punta Gorda State Bank, which he helped establish. He was very influential in real estate and business and was a director in the local Solana Pineries business. I managed to divide my time between Florida 
and my stay in Rick's Haven in the North Carolina mountains. I sold my home here in Punta Gorda to Baron Collier in 1930, who was expanding the Hotel Charlotte Harbor. It was sold again and became the Bayshore Lodge. I eventually retired to Casey Key in Sarasota. Well, thank you so much, Mrs. McAdow. You made quite a strong and lasting impact on the area that can still be seen today. For more photographs and history on Marion and Perry McAdow, you can view our online collections through Charlotte County Libraries and History Catalog. To hear the story of Marion's involvement in spiritualism and her art, view the Fringe Paranormal Ghost Counting Oranges episode on the Charlotte County Community Services YouTube channel. Stay tuned for more icons on next month's History Spotlight and all year long during the Charlotte County Centennial.